Today we are getting sober from being sober, which means we're back on the silly sauce. We're pounding beers today. We're gonna be pounding beers harder than Cal Drago pounds dragon ass, and we got a lot going on today, so get off X hamster. Pay attention to us when you're watching Homebrew Life, because you're at our dinner table. We got a new system from Clawhammer Supply. We're gonna combine it with my new Inkbird sous vide temp controller. I'll give you my full review on the system at the end, so stick around. Today's brew day is gonna be a smash brew, which stands for single milfs and single housewives, single malt and single hop. But not only are we gonna make this smash beer, we're gonna turn it into a splatch beer, which means we're gonna split it in half because I wanna see what performs better. Dry Lutra Kvikes from Omega or my favorite yeast right now, Voss Kvike. So put your tray tables up, crack a beer, cup your junk, and let's light this crowd candle. <laughs> What is going on guys, it's CH from Homebrew for Life, here with a video that is very long overdue. We're making a West Coast IPA, the beer style to put craft beer on the map for all of us. So let's start talking about the recipe, and if you've seen my penis in real life, you gotta start writing me back. You get it? You, you get it? West Coast IPA smash beer, single mall, but which mall? We're going with two row because it's the most accessible and it's the most universal. Single hop, which hop? Amarillo, since I haven't brewed with it in years, and it's the hop that got me into home brewing after I got inspired by the taste of all those good Alpine beers. Big shout out to Alpine. For those who watch the channel know that I'm all about brewing as fast as I can these days while cutting out anything that can go wrong. So I've got a hybrid system. I use propane to heat up fast and I use this Inkbird sous vide thing to maintain heat for temperature control. I do brew in a bag, but with metal grain baskets. I have two, but the one that Clawhammer sells is wider, which means my grain is actually submerged during the mash. You can always just stir it in if your grain is above the liquid. Easy fix. Don't sweat the little things in life, but sometimes I like to step away. But I wanted just something wider for this kettle. I haven't used it yet, but maybe someday I will. It could happen. Brewing a bag is by far the most popular way to brew beer these days. And people are switching from bags to metal baskets. And I'm just trying to get the biggest metal basket. I thought about DIYing this basket, but I learned really fast that it wasn't worth it at all. Sometimes in life, you don't DIY stuff. You wanna spend all summer trying to make that shitty sourdough bread or just go down to the store and buy way better bread for $4. Brewing a bag definitely has a ton of perks, but one of my favorite is that you cannot get a stuck mash. So bye bye rice holes and say hello to running it through your mill two or three times. This is the way that I do it and I've never been short on efficiency yet, but I don't know, maybe today's the day. And if there's any girls that watch this channel and wanna go on a date with me, just let me know. Pretty easy going, just be smoking hot, big old fake titties and just be chill. And if you guys are in the market for some back to school clothes, then step aside Mervin and head over to homebrewforlife.net. We've got a ton of stuff you do not need, like t-shirts, sweatshirts, and $7 stickers. 100% of all proceeds will go to our $80 bar tabs. Now, as far as the rest of the system goes, see, I'm using a simplified version of Clawhammer's signature electric brew in a bag system. Their signature system uses the same kettle and basket, but it also comes with a digital controller, heating element, a heavy duty pump, wart chiller, and a bunch of other bells and whistles. But since I like the speed of propane, and I like to Vorloff manually, I don't have to commit to this. But if I ever wanted to, the system that I have right now is equipped to upgrade to electricity through this tri-clamp right here. They also have the same thing that I have, but a 20 gallon version of it. It's great if you wanna scale up while still sticking to a gas system. Great idea for pilsners or anything with low ABV or 13% meads. Hey, live your life. As far as the rest of the brew day goes, a 30 minute boil with all three ounces of hops going in for 30 minutes. The recipe will be in the description of this video. If you got any questions so far, check out our live stream channel every Wednesday night where we talk about everything. Home brewing, beer trends, why your wife married the wrong husband. Brewing in the rain is fun until it comes to knockout. I don't wanna get rain in my war. Time to split the batch. I started with eight gallons of water and ended up with six after the boil. Divvy up the wort as much as you can equally. Eyeball it, pitch your yeast. I wanted to keep it as fair as possible. No yeast starters, no rehydration. Just straight out of the packs. You're gonna mark O for Omega, pull a gravity reading from one of the batches, boom, 1057. The Voss yeast started fermenting instantly. This is the third time in a row that this has happened. It's a brewer's wet dream. Came back to it three hours later and I saw that the Omega Lutra was finally getting going. All good, three hours, no problem. Time to play the waiting game. And if this NBC doesn't win me a Nobel Peace Prize, then nothing. So in all fairness, this is four days later. Can you check out my shirt? Can you see what shirt I'm wearing? There it is, shout out to Elementary Brew Co. In all fairness, this is four days later, but my final gravity did, but I did hit my final gravity yesterday at about 68 hours, 10, 10. Uh, you do the math on that. I'm gonna call it about 6.2% ABV. 1057 OG, 1010 final gravity. Both hit final gravity within three days, it was awesome. 
Here's the Omega. Fuck. It's good. I don't want to say anything yet. And here's the Voss. Omega's better. Significantly. Not significantly, but it's more of a West Coast IPA. This definitely tastes delicious like a West Coast IPA. This tastes more like a hazy. The Voss tastes more like a hazy. The Omega tastes more like a West Coast IPA. That was the only difference. That was the only difference in all these beers. I mean, I'd still go skinny dipping in this one, but this one just tastes more like a West Coast IPA. Mm. This is my fourth time with Voss. This is my second time with Omega. Dry yeast, that is. It's good to see that. It's good to see dry yeast making a comeback. It is awesome, so we don't have to pay $25 anymore for overnight shipping for liquid yeast. I want to give a big shout out to Clawhammer. The system works great. It is my perfect system. The way that I've created the hybrid with gas and electric with the sous vide stick. I'll leave a link for the system in the description below, but I definitely recommend it. And I don't recommend a lot of things, except Inkbird. If you're watching this video, January 4th, Tuesday, I'm 37 today. 37. Hey now, I'm getting up there, but age is all about attitude. You want a little perspective? When Tony Gwynn was 37, he batted 372. Imagine pushing 40 and almost batting 400. So on that side note of inspiration, I'm gonna go drink 500 beers with my friends from high school. Half of them still live at home. In conclusion, if you're gonna go hazy, I recommend the uh, Voss. And if you wanna go West Coast, I recommend the Omega Lutra. Both delicious beers. I'm glad these both are delicious and this worked out, and this video worked out. But it's a West Coast IPA, so Omega wins. And I'm gonna call it Mermaid Tears. But if you can come up with something better, you can rename it. And if you're looking at my shitty face right now, that means you made it to the end. Thank you. These grain of glass videos take a lot of work for all of us brew tubers, so I appreciate that. Cheers to eating good, cheers to drinking good.